everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with some special guests from Nerd Forge. We have Martina and Huntsy. They have, they have one of my favorite things to show, which is you are missing a pinky yes. and you have, you have fixed this problem with technology and yes. engineering. That you Sorry, I gave this TLDR, that's the spoiler <laughs> alert. Can, this is amazing to me. This is like my favorite thing. Yeah, I mean, I think this is one of my favorite projects as well, because uh, it's like, it, it took a while for us to actually do this project to like get comfortable with the fact that, oh, I'm actually missing a finger. Uh, but it wasn't actually I that had the idea at first because I was like, I was just in the hospital. Right. Okay, so short story. Short story. Short How did story the, where did the finger go? So, <laughs> <laughs> where is it? <laughs> okay, so the thing is, uh, we were going to do some like home renovation projects. And it was just like the last cut of the day oh, I was going to do on a table saw. <sighs> I freaking hate table saws to this day. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, didn't pay enough attention. A single moment of attention gone, and then it was gone. We're not going to get into the details. Like, Fair. it's, yeah, too much. Uh, but yeah, you had to go and try to find this. I, wa I was actually the last person <laughs> to touch your finger, which is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's a horrible story. Uh, yeah, but that's, um, a, that's a really rough day. Yeah, it was a rough day. I yeah. have to admit. <laughs> um, I hurt myself in the shop early on in COVID, and the thing that surprised me most about it was the intense feeling of shame for yeah. hurting myself. It, but it, and it still, so it still lingers because it's like, oh my god, this could have been avoided. Yeah. like come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, and you keep going back. What if? What if? What if? Yeah, what if? yeah, but I mean. It, it could have been worse, like I could have lost them all. Of course, of so, course. Mm. Not too mad about it, honestly. And also I have a cyberpunk pinky now. But so, so, so can it be? How, long, how long were you like this before you decided to engineer the solution? Yeah, so. I, I think we started actually thinking about making this finger pretty fast. Yeah. Because we're like, we have a 3D Did you pinker. think of it really early and then just wait you your did. time? Yeah. Did you like, I can't bring it up too early, <laughs> she'll get pissed off. I think I brought it up pretty early because I was like feeling very bad. You're, you're all like, thanks for your sympathy, and you're all like, no, 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 they're gonna go down. No, but listen, what if? <laughs> exactly. Oh, you had the idea, yeah, because I didn't think about it at all. Honestly. We had three D printers, and it's like, if you have three yeah. D printers, you must be able to make a finger, right? How that was I was thinking. Yeah. And then I googled a little bit, and we found this really awesome mm. open source project that anyone should and yeah. check out, especially if they're lose, missing any fingers. Yeah. We'll include a link in yeah. the description. Yeah. It's called Nix Prosthetic Finger, mm. and it's an open source CAD file where you can like parametrically mm. input the sizes of your finger. Mm. It's so good. Of each knuckle. Of each knuckle. Yeah. Oh, all wow. Yeah. It's really good. So I think just a year after you lost your finger, mm. we made the first one. Yeah, yeah, we did like a, a little test thing, uh, and I at the time I worked at uh, a high school as yeah, a teacher. Yeah. Uh, so I kind of, I wore it to school and all the students were like, oh my God, what is that? It's so <laughs> cool. Uh, but that one was just a super like primitive version. Right, just right. a 3D printed thing with like an elastic band around my hand. Uh, just the bare bones, but that was like the first. The, the proof of yeah. yeah, the bare yeah. bones. Nicely <laughs> 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 done. That was not intended. <laughs> um, we have Beautiful. here a yes. progression. Yeah. Yes. So this this first one is after that what you just described. Yes. yes. Okay. It took a while, I think, for you, as you said, to get past, yeah. like to get comfortable with it. Yeah. Mm. We we wanted to make this video for a very long time. Yeah. So was there even? I mean, I I would imagine for me just approaching as an engineering project, mm. I'd still have a difficulty with the emotional content. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, to be fair, it took about five years for me to just be like, okay, it happened, it's sure. fine, let's just let's just do something fun with it. What the hell? Like, right. I'm not gonna go around just being salty about it, so let's, let's see what we can do here. I just had to warm up a bit and be comfortable with the idea of making a video around it. Yeah. Uh, and at that point, it was like, okay, let's just go all in. <laughs> let's try to make it like a, a cyberpunk theme, like give it some aesthetic as well and not just be some three well, this, this is your expertise is ticking the first domino of a project. Yeah. So yeah. it took yeah. you five years to yeah. do that. <laughs> and now, now you, then you're off to the race. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So this is the first iteration after the elastic yes. band. Yes. Mm. Uh, okay. So the elastic band was kind of a hassle to take on and off. So we thought, okay, what if we just attach it to a glove uh, try to make a backplate to hold uh, this fishing line that right. basically yeah. acts as the tendon in the finger. And this backplate ends up providing, uh, on the soft body, a nice yeah. hard anchor from which mm. you can yeah, activate. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, so uh, the tendon here, it, tendon, it's a fishing line <laughs> attached to the inside of the finger, finger, so you can kind of see it go on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. So if I just pull it, then you can Ooh. see it tightens up. So when I pull my hand like this, it goes in. And then on the inside here, there's also an elastic attached to 
uh, all the parts here that like help it spring back up once I'm not tightening my hand anymore. Wow. So it kind of moves with. Okay, my but hand so here. this is the this is the latest iteration. Yes, there are this, two, this is this there, is all the success. Yeah, this is the success <laughs> moment. These are the latest ones. Yeah, so, so okay. this has a feature. Yeah, so <laughs> may I? I thought. Yeah, yeah, of course. Have a look. I thought what would be cool is if I could just like have a built-in light in my finger because why not? Oh. If I'm looking for something in the middle of the night, I can just like turn on my finger. Yes, you know, you, when, you know when you drop something underneath the fridge uh, yeah. and you can't reach under there with a the, with the light? You can just stick your pinky I, in there. This is, I, this yes. is it's okay. never not okay. in my pocket. Exactly. But, but I have totally, I love the idea of being able to boom. Yeah. Right? So, so you put a light have, in it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course, we just we have to put lights in everything. Yes. Uh, so, well, the addition here is really just that we have this part right here that contains yeah. uh, a momentary switch button, a little three volt battery. So if I just turn this wheel, oh. then it turns on. Dude, dude you are ET. <laughs> yes, exactly. Amazing, <laughs> Elliot. Uh, but again, we're jumping forward. Yes, yeah. what to getting too excited. Well, what I'm noticing is, mm. I mean, this is a lovely mechanism, and I can feel how much smoother this this yeah. one is. So, is it like, did you use this for a few weeks and break it a few times? One thing I think yeah. you should mention is Martina has. If you look at her hands, they are very, very small tiny. Fingers. Yes, yes. Yeah. So when you try to input, I think it was a larger man's hands that was the baseline <laughs> yeah. for this. this oh, you had to make it like finger. half the size. We had Basically. to make it so small that it kind of broke the the, yeah. the model a little bit. Ah. But Martina is proficient in Blender and some other 3D programs, so she I, kind of fixed it a little yeah. bit. Yeah, uh, I, I I know at least the basics enough that I can make some iterations. Uh, so. On this one, the problem was that the, the bottom piece here that actually attaches to my, my stump was mm -hmm. just too long. So when I bent my fingers, it kind of just, it went way longer out ah, on my knuckles. Gotcha. Yeah. So it, it kind of felt a bit wonky. It was a little too long, a little too big. Oh, um, I can imagine that if it's way yeah. out there, you're just feeling like you're imbalanced. Yeah, mm, exactly. Sure. And like when I hold my hands like this, this kind of line up. Yeah. But on the first one, this was like the same size mm. as my Do you finger. ever add a nail to this one? <laughs> I haven't even cared I should have. Oh my god. Because <laughs> you, you, you definitely apply real care to the yeah. nails, so I think that. I sh that's the next iteration right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you shortened yeah. that, you shortened the stock where it yeah. met the stump. Uh, and it, it doesn't feel as smooth because uh, some of the holes that go inside here for the 10 and for uh, the elastic on the inside were placed a little awkwardly when my finger was so small. So, so even so, down to these small things, those tiny differences make a big difference. Yeah, because really uh, it's such a small mechanism that even the slightest just millimeter change really changes how it feels. So each iteration you really notice all sorts of differences. Yeah, yeah. if you bend your hand, you're not using a lot of force, mm. right. but all of that force has to be translated into bending the finger, yeah. and you'll lose a lot of friction there, so it has to be pretty smooth. Yeah. Wow. All right, so after iteration 1.0. Yeah, then we then we started to think about, okay, what if we include a light uh, in there? <laughs> so uh, on this one, we try to include in the fingertip, there's a little like LED filament light. Oh, and you've got these little like 30 gauge wires. Yeah, <laughs> super oh, tiny. Man. It was a pain in the ass to get the wires in there. Uh, trying to find the, the route for the cables, not the easiest when you want the finger to be able to bend as well. No, totally. But, uh, but we thought like, okay, it's gonna be cyberpunk aesthetic. Let's just let them be visible on the outside, like make it part of a design. So mm. uh, on this one, this was just like a rudimentary test piece. This is your attempt to hide it. Yeah, and so we just like, wanted to see, yeah, okay, just... where can we actually right, put right. the wires and still be able to bend uh, the finger? And this was also uh, trying to like adjust the back plates and also like, get the wires from this finger piece to the battery that sits on the wrist. So uh, this was just trying to make all the pieces fit together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just making it work before we make it pretty, basically. Mm. And you guys are sewing these gloves yourselves too. Actually, these are just uh, like pre-made oh, okay. leather gloves. Just, oh, and you're just cutting just, them up and yeah, mm. yeah, just right. to save okay. some time. We were like, okay, let's just let's just buy some. Since okay. since these are all three D models, mm. we wanted to make it so that if it broke, we could easily make a new one. Yeah. So not having to sew a new glove every time, we can uh, just get a new pair. Yeah. Then so it just becomes the base platform. Exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. Exactly. Mm. Um, and then this is the final iteration. It's the yeah. same as what you're wearing. Yeah, it's the same one uh, with the lights oh. built into it. We wanted to do like 3D metal plating on mm. top to have yeah. it in real metal, yeah. which we did. Yeah, we, we did. did try. Yeah. 
turns out it adds a lot of weight. Oh no, yeah. it adds weight and dimensionality. And dimensionality. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not the best for friction. No, yeah. I did. A bu we did a bunch of that on Bicentennial Man, and it messed up every single prop I yeah. built. And I ended up having to accommodate like almost like the better part of a millimeter every it's time yeah, I every was time. Yeah, But exactly. it, the problem is it's just so cool. So you <laughs> wanted to do it. You want to do <laughs> it. It's just finish. so amazing to do. But we ended up using a pretty uh, pretty cool like uh, metal paint, like yeah. a chrome paint. Is mm. this, wow, it is a really nice metal paint. It, it's yeah. all about the finishing, you know, yeah. the sanding right. it. That polished black, mm. the yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, perfect like glossy black clear coat underneath. Because uh, I mean, it's yeah. good. I can see that your chrome has a high metallic content mm. because it's tarnishing and yeah. it's actually really beautiful. Yeah. yeah, and you can really see that on this one that I've used. Oh, Oh yes, York. look at that. You really have the weathering. You get like going. the proper weathering. We yeah. didn't have to weather this. No, I see that. It's <laughs> just moving through your wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious a, a couple of years ago I got to visit the um the the Walter Reed Hospital mm. where the US does the prosthetics for the military mm. and it's an amazing amazing science and engineering mm. field. Mm. Yeah. I'm curious what the response has been from the amputee community about this. I think most people think it's really cool, yeah. especially like the aesthetic side of things cuz I think, as, at least as far as I've seen, there aren't yeah. that many that focuses on the aesthetics. I mean, obviously, because it has to work. Like That's the yeah. number one priority. Uh, but I think people are like really appreciating the fact that we try to like add some aesthetics in there. And I mean, we've been asked a lot if we can put the, the models out there. The problem is just that it's very custom to my hand. Right. Yeah. And, right. I, and it's an open source model. So yeah. for you, it's more like, I get, I'm showing you the process. Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. Yeah. I think um, there's a double amputee Olympian, Amy Mullins, mm. uh, has done a lot of talking about the, pro about the aesthetics of prosthetics. Yeah. So she's got going out legs, Ooh. she's got working legs, she's nice. got That's competition so cool. legs. That's right? so cool. cool. And it turns like this kind of like sad thing mm. into like something that is really cool. Like yeah. instead of, oh, you're missing your fingers, like, whoa, what a cool finger you yeah, have. Yeah, right? And that's amazing. It's a bonus accessory. Yeah. It's like you're going and to everybody party. is like asking when, when we meet people, like, where's your finger, Martina? Yes. You have your finger and you're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's here. It's now here. now yeah. I'm curious, are, uh, do you have any, what are future plans? Oh. What, are, what are future upgrades? Oh my god, I, I mean, it would be very cool to like make it actually like electric to yeah. have some mm -hmm. power in it because uh, one of the main uh, problems, especially since the stump I have is very small, it doesn't have that much uh, like grip, grip power right, in it. Right. Uh, the problem isn't really, because we've had some comments asking, well, you could add some silicone grip to the tip, but it's more about just the power the of right. the strength of the hand. Uh, so. I'm guessing like if we could somehow include some electronics to like make it electric, uh, motor, then yeah. we could have some more strength. What about uh, a in much there. longer one that like has like almost tentacle motion? Yeah, that would be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You guys are so much fun to talk to about this. <laughs> or like different utilities. Yeah. We have the lead one. What can we do? Like screwdriver? Um, wine bottle opener? Yeah, oh, that would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, you're getting this. I'm gonna have like Mi a billion ideas now. <laughs> Dremel. That would be Dremel? cool. Yeah. That would it's be cool. a die grinder. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's terrifying! Oh. I, would, I would just hurt myself on that. But that would be very uh, cool. Um, lighter? Lighter. Possibly. Camera. Oh, camera? I mean... Yeah. Hmm. That's a bit creepy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, this is so, so inspiring. And not just inspiring for the project itself, but uh, that you talk about the physical journey, mm. but also the emotional journey, mm. and you share this on your channel. Like that is to me the the, the lovely thing about this format that we get to play in, mm. is that there are so few few overarching rules that we can build our own sort of rule structures. Yeah. Mm. And like this is just like my, this is like my favorite kind of thing <laughs> that YouTube delivers. You guys are amazing. Oh, thank, oh, you, thank, so thank you so much. So much. Oh, thank really, you so for really inviting inspiring. us. Oh wait, can I shake the other hand? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. Dude. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah.